Welcome back to Signature Sense. My name is Ryan and today I am very happy that we're going to be testing good vibrations from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. Now I've been saving some of the best for last from this uh, 11 set sample set that I've got from them. Good Vibrations is their take on a classic barbershop scent from the 60s. So I'm going to be discussing its character, its significance, its projection, all that good stuff, and then we're going to draw a conclusion and find out if this is a signature worthy scent or this is a pass. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so real quick, a little bit of a significance for this. Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements first released this as part of their Big Shave event called Big Shave West, and it was such a hit that people demanded that they release it to the masses. And this is the product, it's called Good Vibrations. They now have it in aftershave, they have it in EDP, they have the deodorant, shaving cream, the lotion, they also have the shampoo and soap. So they have a huge product line behind this and I am really excited to talk about the character, including the note breakdown and the smell test. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about Good Vibrations character. Obviously the name Good Vibrations gives you some idea. This is supposed to be, I just remember that Beach Boys song, it plays in my head when I think about this stuff. Now, one of the cool things about this, in addition to it being all natural ingredients, it's it's been aged or matured for a year prior to making it uh, available to sell. That's pretty cool. So let's talk about the note breakdown of this. We're gonna do a smell test and then we're gonna finally come up with this personification of what this scent's about and what is the full character behind this. Okay, so the way this is described on the website is spring tree blossoms with like such as horse chestnut. There's a distinct woodiness, sandalwood, mahogany, rosewood, a light vanilla muskiness, a pinch of rosemary, soft lavender, amber talc, and oak moss on the base. These are all ingredients that I absolutely love. The rosemary, I'm a huge fan of rosemary. It gives it that, uh, I Bogart Signature is one of the scents that I have, but I love the rosemary and it gives it that soapiness. Uh, the vanilla-ness, I love that in the Old Spice. I mean, there's the sandalwood, the mahogany. I've already smelled the rosewood in their uh, um, homage to Polo Sport. It's really, really good, very, very masculine. So I'm looking forward to this. Real quick, I also want to look at, I didn't. I don't talk about this, I didn't talk about this in the past videos, but look at the ingredients. You have the alcohol, they use rose water, they use all the essential uh, fragrance oils I just mentioned. They have glycerin, hedione, seaweed extract, aloe vera and menthol and that's it that's all natural so it's super cool so that i think contributes to the character so let's jump into the smell test where we're going to start out of the bottle okay let's give this a smell out of the bottle and then we're going to put some on some paper and this is going to give us a baseline so that way we can uh, look at how it may or may not morph on your skin and also my own okay here we go okay so first reaction just like the rest of the Phoenix Art Accoutrements, you can just smell how fresh this stuff is. It's just such a treat to be able to smell these from Phoenix Art and Accoutrements. These, natural, these naturals are just on a whole other level of, of something that I want to put on my body. I, that's the best way I can put it right now. So what I'm getting out of the bottle, it's really interesting They talk about this late spring tree blossoms. This smells like a somewhat fruity floral wood now fruity floral is not like it's not extreme fruity it's not extreme floral it's not flowery floral it's not a sweet fruity or jammy i'm not getting vanilla or anything yet to my nose so i'm really excited let's take this next step and i got i can't wait to see how this scent profile develops on the paper here we go for the paper smell i would really love to know what that note is it's it's a uh, Again, it's like a fruity, floral, not in a bad way. It's It's got something very distinct. I wonder if it's the mahogany. It's it's almost like, it's not fruity floral as a standalone fruity floral accord. It's a wood that is fruity floral. That's what it smells like. It smells like a, a natural kind of wood that's got a, um, a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, fruity floralness to it. It's hard to put it into words. I am getting a little bit of the musk. I'm not getting so much of the vanilla, but I am getting a little bit of the muskiness. It's in the background, but it is painting, definitely is coming up through this, this flor fruity floral woodiness. Lavender is there in a supporting role. You can pick it out when you look for it with your nose, but if you're not looking for it, it really just blends in very, very nicely. Honestly, it all kind of blends in very nicely. 
you'd really have to smell and look for different individual notes. So gen the general chord is the fruity floral wood uh, on the paper though. What's different about it is this uh, slight musky woodiness is a little bit more pronounced on the paper so far. So I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to take it to the next step. Let's get it on the skin and see how this projects. I am really looking forward to this. Okay, so we have ours distilled. The juice is nice and clear as you can see. This is a two mil sprayer. It's a little bit over halfway, uh, which is pretty common with these Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements. They give you a little bit over a mil in their samples, which are, by the way, $1 per sample. I think shipping and handling for the U.S. is around 6 bucks. So it's really, really uh, fun to just go on there. And they have a ton of different scents. You can just go on and pick. I, I picked 11 on my first go, however many you want. It's pretty cheap and affordable to get into them. So let's go ahead and spray this on the hand. And we'll get some on the neck as well. I already tell you this scent is something that I'm really liking. So if we get that on the camera, nice little shine. Ooh, in the air, you're getting that... It's that it's like a fruity floral wood. It's just really very pleasant though. Okay, let's do a little bit under the skin, under the shirt, I mean. Alright. Pretty good solid sprays there. Looks like we took about down, I don't know, quarter quarter mil or so. Okay. Now in the air there is definitely way more stuff notes was coming out. Unfortunately, I just don't quite know what those notes were. I'm looking on their their site, and I'm not, honestly, I'm not getting, there's almost like a, a sort of a, gosh, I don't know what that is. Because I haven't had the chance to smell a mahogany uh, by itself or a rosewood by itself. I have smelled the rosewood in their Polo Sport, but this is not that rosewood. This is definitely, there's a floral... That whatever they're calling the late spring, late spring tree, maybe this is what it is. The scent profile says rich late spring tree blossoms such as horse chestnut. So maybe this horse chestnut blossom, if that's a thing, is what that accord is. It's, it's a very, oh, you know what else? They have hedione in this. Maybe it's the hedione. Um, yeah, they have hedione. It's a very nice floral. It's not a flowery floral. It's floral, but it's it's not like a rose or geranium or carnation. It's not that. It's kind of like a musky floral. It's very, very nice, I have to say. Very pleasant. It, it really, it, honestly, this stuff, it smells like I'm sticking my nose into a flower to smell the actual flower. That's, I, I'm actually blown away. It, it smells so good. It's like sticking your head in a flower garden and getting a huge waft of like in the springtime, which is really interesting because this this scent was made for uh, the 60s barbershop style with a spring kind of theme. And honestly, that's what I'm getting off of this. It's like a spring flower. It's so uh, very pleasant. Now there is uh, this floral note, whatever it is, is what I was getting out of the bottle. It's what out of the, out of the uh, off the paper as well. Um, the, the floral note though on my skin is, is much more pronounced. Like this is all that I'm getting on the top so far. So this is the top of this scent. Super nice. You can smell coming up through the flower. There is a little bit of woodiness to it. It's not prominent yet, but it gives, it gives a little bit of a, a texture to that, that uh, floral note. Yeah. Um, this is, wow. I am. Um, I am almost in love with this on the opening so far. So let me go ahead and disappear. I'll give it a nice extended wear. I'm actually going to put some on my clothes as well because I want to see how long this stuff lasts. And I will check back in with you and share my thoughts. Okay. Okay, I am back and I have some fantastic observations to share about the scent. As you notice, I have actually shaved. So the continuity is terrible in this, but I assure you it is the same day. I haven't had to bust out the old lamp to get some light on this face because it's actually dark outside now. So I'm going to share about the dry down stages, the projection performance, the quality of the scent, its charm, also its personification. I'm going to share my final conclusions 
about what are my thoughts on this sun? It's versatility, who's it for, and all that good stuff. So let's get into it. Okay, so after the first 10 minutes or so, like almost very close to when I first recorded and I left, it starts to become just this hedion note. And that floral note that I was looking for before actually is hedion. And I'm going to talk about that more when I talk about the final conclusion part of why I know it's hedion. But this hedion smell is what you're getting uh, after the first 10 minutes in the air. That is the main accord. And when you dive and dig your nose deep into it, you will get a like a polony mustiness to it. It's, it's really like smelling sticking your nose inside the flower. It's actually really, really incredible. Okay, so after an hour, it starts to like congeal a little bit and it almost becomes jammy. It's not like no added sugar has been added to it. It's still the same floral note. It just kind of shifts a little bit to become like, like jammy sweet, but in a really, really good way. Again, there's still a slight musty pollininess when you dig your nose into it, which is a little bit more subdued, but it's still there. After about three to four hours, it's kind of the same thing, but the volume is turned down. So it's not, I guess you wouldn't say it's so much jammy. It's still that floral note. It's still con kind of congealed smelling, but the volume's turned down and it's, it's sort of a different experience. Now, on the, uh, on the clothes, that jammy, floral note of the hedion particularly or the hedion floral so when i say floral it's not like carnation it's not geranium it's not lavender it's not rose this is a whole different thing is hedion it it still smells a little bit jammy that jamminess which is kind of nice is what's retained on the clothes and it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a i think it's bath and body works like a lotion but without the syntheticness and without the like just that extra stuff it just it has that kind of vibe to it but in a really good way so i don't know if that's like a turn off or not that's the, what a memory triggered in my brain almost like um to have walked in the soap store where they make these handmade soaps it's not soapy per se but you could easily see this being in like one of those lush bombs or something like that it kind of has that vibe about it okay so in general this one the general chord here is for me on my skin is that hedio note now there is uh, you can, it's it's hard to say, like, there is a little bit of a woodsiness, and the other notes are so well blended, also very subtle that it that help ground it, but they're really, I mean, when you're just smelling this in the air, and in general, you're getting the hedion, the other stuff, it, it, it does such a supporting role that it's almost like it's not even there, but surely, I'm sure if you were to smell a pure hedion note, and then this, you're going to pick up probably that this is a little bit different, but it's very, very well blended, and the main accord is that he owned for me. Okay, so the overall quality of this scent. This scent, just like all the Phoenix Stars and Accoutrement scents that I've been testing, the quality of the smell is top notch. It's all naturals. The guy apparently diffuses a lot or some of his own oils. I mean, it smells literally like you're putting your nose in the flower. The quality is on a high level. Nobody's going to say you're wearing a cheap cologne when wearing this. It, it smells so, so good. Okay, so... The projection and performance. So for the first two hours, give or take, on my skin, you're getting a nice, respectable scent bubble. It's not overbearing, but you're getting, uh, it's it's just solid. You're getting nice, uh, pleasant wafts of this stuff. Now, after two hours, between like, say, two to five hours, give or take, this the volume is turned down. It's sort of like... Um, the wasps become more wispy, so they're not like strong and thick. Not that they ever are, but they're turned down to the point where as you move about, you kind of get these little pleasant little fragrance. So the, the general summary of the projection of this is it accentuates you. It doesn't define you. So when you walk into a room, you're not going to fill it up and like be smacking everyone in the face. Like, look at me. This is, you know, this is one where you're going to get these little subtle wasps that is like, is that him? Is that it's kind of like a mysterious uh, it has an allure to it and the, because of that hedion what I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit the wasps are very pleasant just that little it's almost like oh i want to i want to dive my nose into the shirt to get to get my a full full it's almost like it teases you this is like a that's maybe the best way of explaining it this the wasps are kind of like teases that is like kind of the the best way it's like a teasing sort of experience now uh, the longevity on this this is a scent you'll be able to stretch six, seven, even eight hours or more depending on your chemistry. 
I did notice that with when the skin warms up, you, the wafts also increase. Not a huge surprise, but it definitely makes a big difference from going from outside in the cold, which it is today, from going inside in the heat, and also moving around, you start getting it. Also spraying on the shirt, your skin underneath warms up, and you start getting these little diffusion wafts. And this is one I think you can easily get six, seven, eight hours out of it. And you know, just like Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements, other ones. They have the deodorants, they have the lotion, they have the shampoo, they have the uh, EDP, they have all these, you can literally head to toe layer this and this will take you the whole day even without that stuff, but if you want to go further, there, there's that. In addition to that, with the longevity, this stuff is $26 for 100 mil and because it's not a huge dramatic dry down, it's, it's I don't want to say linear, it kind of, but it is kind of just the heat ion and then it gets a little jammy and then gets the volume gets turned down. You can reapply this and the reapplication isn't going to change the sense much. It is going to turn the volume back up, but it's it's just something to think about. Okay, so the charm of this stuff. Now let me talk more about this Hedion. So this Hedion is promoted as that flower fragrance. I don't know if the, it's this one or the heliotrope. That's the precursor to MDMA, which is I think ecstasy. But Hedion in particular is associated with stimulating the part of the brain associated with pleasure and libido. So this is very much an aphrodisiac scent. And now if you've ever had the chance to smell a side effect by Initio, you're going to recognize the smell and that's how I knew it was Hedion. Because before I got into the classic masculine scents, I dabbled in Initio and also which is a sister house of Parfums de Marly, which I started with Parfums de Marly. And before that there were some others. Initio side effect was one that I actually bought a sample for and I'm quite familiar with the scent. In general, this gives me huge side effect vibes, but definitely the charm of this stuff is that Hedion. The flower scent is so photorealistic, it's like sticking your nose in the flower. And even though it's sweet, it's just something that it smells good. Even though your masculine side's like, hey man, that shouldn't you shouldn't be liking this, it's so sweet. It's just one of those ones that's very pleasant, and I really think it is that that stimulation of the brain i think the name good vibrations is a really apt name for this because this is something that's very elating about wearing this you don't know why but you just want to you want to keep smelling it okay so let me now talk about the personification of the scent now the personification of the scent to me this is a very masculine person who doesn't require a scent to make him masculine he's already masculine He's very confident in himself, and that's why he can pull off a scent like this, which just further accentuates him. This is a person who makes how he looks a priority. He doesn't like to walk, walk around in grungy clothes. This is someone who likes to like wear formal casual. They make grooming a priority. They like to look nice. They like to dress nice. This is somebody who probably drives a Mercedes, an Audi, or a BMW, or really is attracted to that, that style or kind of car. They have a certain brightness or, or a certain brightness or sparkle in their smile and eyes. It's like a glimmer of youthfulness or charm that makes them very, very attractive. Something about him makes women want to get close to him, even if they don't know why. Like this is the guy who's standing at the grocery store in the aisle and a woman's got her shopping cart. She's walking, looking down the aisles and she sees the guy and she kind of just, she doesn't know why. She doesn't necessarily need anything from him, but she just wants to go stand by him and kind of look at the stuff as he's looking at it. She just wants to get close to him. So he's attractive, but in a mysterious and subtle way. It's not an overbearing, he's not walking around with his shirt off, his six pack showing and like, it's not that kind of attractive where it's so raw. This one's more of a subtle thing. There's something, they don't know what it is about him. It's just something that pulls him. He's almost magnetic, but without having to like flaunt. Okay, so final judgments. Is this a signature worthy scent? Is this a collectible? Is it a pass? Would I buy this stuff? Let's talk about it. So. In short, yes, I am actually intending on buying this scent and I'm going to tell you why. This scent for me fills a gap in my drawer of a scent that I don't have, which is a sweeter smell. Most of my, actually in fact, all of my scents are the classic scents. A lot of them don't have any sweetness at all to them. This is a scent for me that is a perfect date night scent. This is a perfect like Netflix and chill type of scent. This is a scent that you put on whenever you want to attract the opposite sex. It's that sweeter one, but it's without having that those modern designers, that synthetic sweet. This is a, uh, a very natural, very attractive, and it smells fantastic. It's not just 
that it's going to attract or stimulate the brain of the opposite sex. It's also a sign that you can wear this if you just want to get elated. It, it, I mean, it works on me. When I smell this stuff, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel elated. And I can really attest to that. It does, I think it really does activate that part of the brain. So versatility, as I said, anytime you want to attract or be attractive to the opposite sex, anytime you want to just feel good and, and get those good vibrations going, and you maybe, it's like when you're, you know, you want to take a break from all the, the more rugged masculine sense, you want to go sweet for a day, this one for me definitely scratches the itch. Seasons to wear this in, I think this is a perfect springtime scent, definitely summertime scent, but fall and winter, you're going to be able to wear this in the fall and winter as well because it's a circumstantial one. Any of those occasions I have mentioned, or just in general, it's not polarizing where like this it has to be for sure this, for sure that. I would say that it seems to be because of that floralness, it, it just seems like a, a it's going to really blossom in the spring, especially, and also summertime. But again, winter, fall, you're going to be able to pull this off. I wear this. It's it's late fall here, kind of early winter time. And um, I didn't feel uncomfortable or out of place wearing it. Okay, so genders. This is a unisex fragrance. But again, this is one of those fragrances where if a confident man who carries himself in the right way is wearing this, you say, oh, yeah, that's a man's fragrance. If a woman's wearing it, it's the same thing. It's really who's wearing it and how they carry themselves, but this one could go both ways. A very sexy, charming man, also a very provocative woman. I think it's got the, the sexiness will go on whoever it's wearing. Okay, mature versus young. What age group's going to wear this? I think this is a very interesting one to look at. I think that any age group could pull this off. However, it's more of a mental thing. So if they're younger and the mind and heart, no matter how old they are, this will work for you. Um, I don't think it, it necessarily is limited to it has to be a young guy or an old guy. It's kind of this, this how you carry yourself mentally and your heart. If you're someone who cannot stand sweet fragrances and that's not your thing, this is not going to be your scent uh, for sure. However, I think this is a really interesting one for a younger guy uh, to pull this off because... Most you're gonna smell different. You're gonna smell that that um, that kind of photorealistic smell to it, and that sweet but not synthetic y sweet. And there's you know it's it's really like uh, an aphrodisiac. I think it'll be a very interesting experiment for a younger guy to wear this around younger women. And the girls I think might go nuts for this stuff because you're gonna smell different. You're gonna be attractive. You're not gonna be overbearing. And when they lean in and when they get those wispy wafts as you're walking around moving about. I think it's really gonna charm their, you know, charm them. I was to say charm their pants off, but I want to keep this, you know, P P G. I don't mean literally charm their pants off. It's just as an expression. I think it's gonna be very charming. I think they're gonna want it. They're they're gonna want to lean in and smell you more. And really, anybody who wears this, I think, this is one people just, you know, you yourself, you can tell. For me, I just want to smell it more. I'm I'm sure other people are going to as well. There's something very charming and sexy about this scent. Okay, so based on this review, is this something that you would wear? If yes or no, leave me a comment below. And in general, if you have any questions or feedback about this review, things you enjoyed, things you didn't, or things you'd like to see more of, leave me a comment below. I would love to get in discussion with you guys. And remember, waft kindness to others. God bless.